This fleet equipment unscripted interview is presented by Hendrickson, a leading manufacturer of heavy-duty suspension systems and components to the global commercial transportation industry. Visit hendrickson-intl.com to learn more. Hi everyone, Jason Morgan, Content Director for Fleet Equipment. Welcome to Fleet Equipment Unscripted. I am at the ATA mc &E Show in Nashville. I got the Peterbilt booth behind me. We are going to swing into the booth and get a closer look at the Model 579 EV. We've seen it at a couple shows, but now we're going to take some time, get into the specs, talk about range anxiety, talk about the impact on drivers, and hear about Peterbilt's experience as this rolls out to customers. So come along and let's see what we can find out. So we're here, we got the Peterbilt 579 EV model. Uh, can you walk us through some specs? What's powering the electric truck? Sure, so this is our flagship EV model at Peterbilt. Uh, we have the largest EV portfolio in the industry with uh, three models. We have refuse, medium duty, and of course this 579. Uh, this 579 is a normal tractor that has an 80,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating. Uh, it's powered by uh, tandem E-axles for a combined output of 536 horsepower. So strong startability, silent operation. Uh, we have 400 kilowatt hour batteries. That translates to about 150 miles of range. And uh, up front where the engine would be, that's where we have all our accessories and uh, power electronics so that we utilize that space to do that. So the tandem E-axles, does that mean the motor is integrated into the axle? Is that that's, what that is? That's correct. Okay. It's, it's one unit, motor, inverter, and axle. Okay. And we have two of those. Okay. And that's the, I see a Meritor here on the on the door, so that's a Mer Meritor yeah, system? Yeah, that's okay. correct. We partnered with Meritor for these E-axles. Very cool. Uh, so you, you mentioned the range here, about 150 miles of range. Uh, range anxiety... It seems to be a conversation on the front end with fleets that are interested. How do you walk them through that conversation? What have you heard from customers as they're operating the 579 EV in terms of range anxiety and getting over that? So far, we've had uh, great feedback. We've been working with Run on Less, and one of our customers, uh, the Aji Brothers, has been running one of our trucks. And it hasn't been a huge issue. Kind of what we do to address customers when they're worried about range is, is we make sure to look at their entire application. Uh, we can run simulations to see, you know, are they running loaded there, running loaded back, are they running loaded one way? So we can look at all those factors, we can do simulations, and they usually end up being uh, pretty well done and pretty accurate. And we also, you know, make sure that there's a little bit of allowance there. So once we talk through that, we run the simulations, we show them the numbers, I think that really brings home, you know, the the reality of it right and then once they try the truck out uh, we've seen success where we've predicted that right okay so running the mo uh, running the models it seems that fleets would want to know their duty cycles exactly. their their routes they know those very well what other advice would you give to fleets that want to get the conversation started well what else do they need to know and I mean outside of buying the truck what do, who they got to talk to to get started with the whole project yeah so in electric vehicles there are specific applications that are better for electric vehicles Electric vehicles, vehicles excel in like stop start. They excel in regional and drayage applications. Uh, a diesel's at very efficient when just going down the highway at a constant speed. Yeah. Electric vehicles have regenerative braking. They're very efficient in like hilly terrain, stop start, you know, city delivery, those kind of things. And so we really sell those applications on on this vehicle. We say right. this is the best tool for the job, not just because we're trying to get you in an electric vehicle, but it right. is the best tool for the job. Right, right. Well, one quick question for you, because you mentioned just kind of some of the differences in the driving, driving an EV versus driving a diesel. Do you, is there driver training? What might fleets need to know in terms of telling drivers it might operate a little differently than you're used to, acclimation time, that kind of thing? Yeah, there definitely is some driver training. So there's a basic level of, of safety that they should go over to know how things disconnect and everything like that. Uh, and then there's a little bit of training that goes with regenerative braking. You want them to utilize the regenerative braking as much as possible. Right. If, if someone's driven an EV car, they're probably very familiar with it because uh, it's, it can be similar to an engine brake, right? You, right? you feel that. One of the key differences is that if you have the batteries fully charged, you're not going to get regenerative braking because there's nowhere to put that energy. Oh, sure. So drivers need to know, okay, I'm starting off. I'm not going to have regenerative braking for a little bit. The brakes might feel a little different, but then once I get a little energy out, yes, I'll have that regenerative braking 
to assist. But once you get to that point, drivers really like it just because of that great startability, that instant torque, you pull away from a stop right. and you have the regenerative braking. It, you know, you can you can one pedal drive it for the most part. Right. Right. And that can be that can that can feel good. Right. Well and quieter too, it's less quiet. vibration. I mean yeah. it is a lot of fun driving EVs. Yeah, like you know, for example, you know, you can have a mirror shake at idle right. with a diesel engine. Here you're not gonna have anything. You're right. just gonna be sitting calmly, uh, no vibration. <laughs> And that's another great application is where uh, a driver has to do a lot of sitting, nice. a lot of idle time, right. and running the AC or running the heat doesn't take a huge amount of energy. Okay. So they can just sit there, you know, in comfort. They're not idling anything. I see. And no problem, especially that's a big advantage at a no idle facility. Yeah, right? that, yeah that's right. And, and interesting to know that the HVAC doesn't really impact rain because I know that was one of the early questions before it, it does take a little energy it does take a little energy but it doesn't take a huge amount okay so you're still safe using it they don't yes. have to freeze oh, or, or sit there and sweat absolutely and <laughs> you shouldn't be in an application where that's going to make or break you right we we want you to stay under that you know because there's always some unplanned routes and anything like that right. if your HVAC is making or breaking you then we got something misaligned with the application for sure for sure yeah. very cool thanks for taking the time yeah